Spindle Tool Holder Collet Chuck, three pillars of the milling process. In this video, I will tell you how to choose them. Prepare yourself, today we will absorb a lot of CNC knowledge. My name is David, this is Virmer. Check your subscription and let's get started. Spindles. First, there are water-cooled spindles and air-cooled spindles. Water cooling is quiet, air cooling is loud. But for water cooling, you need a chiller that has to be refilled periodically when the air cooled doesn't need anything. While a chiller will alert you of problems of low water levels, you'll need to check the filter status of an air cooled spindle yourself. So make your choice based on your preferences or hearing. Second, there are spindles with and without an automatic change tool system. The ones without are divided into types based on the bearings and materials they work with. GDZ spindles, these are considered universal because they are suitable for milling wood, plastic and soft metals. These spindles are installed on some Watson machines due to their ability to handle a wide range of materials. GDK format, these spindles are mainly designed for working with non-ferrous metals and offer increased rigidity for such tasks. However, GDK spindles can also be used for milling other materials. Their RPM usually reaches up to 24,000 RPM. The X spindles. This type has a maximum RPM range of 8,000 to 12,000 RPM and is intended for processing non-ferrous metals like aluminum as well as ferrous metals such as steel, cast iron, etc, etc. Let me further discuss RPM a little bit here. Cutting efficiency is based on it. Most of the time, RPM equals 18,000 or 24,000, but there are cases where it's 15,000 rotations per minute, like for spindles with an auto change system. Don't chase the highest RPM value. Higher numbers don't necessarily mean faster or better machine performance. For most tasks, 18,000 RPM is enough, while 24,000 RPM is only used in about 10% of the cases for miniature operations. Third, spindles differ by country of origin. They're usually or Italians or Chinese. In terms of quality, the Italians are usually better, but the price can be to from five to 10 times higher, meaning repairing an Italian spindle could cost as much as buying a new Chinese one. Therefore, from a cost and performance perspective, Chinese spindles are the optimal solution, ultimately allowing you to produce high quality products. By the way, our engineers work all around Europe and Wirmer provides support and services if repair of change is required. And don't worry about long downtimes. Watson CNC routers are built with components from very well-known brands, such as Teiyu SNA, Hewin, Shimpo, and others. This choice was made so you can have confidence in the reliability of Watson machines, knowing that spare parts will be available whenever you want. That's why Wirmer is proud to be an official dealer of this factory. Tool holders. Attention, if you don't have a second CNC router with an auto change system, like a Watson 1325 M3, for example, then you can skip this part and go to the next section. This is going to be useful for you only if you need to change tool holders between two machines. Tool holders might look similar, however, they are not interchangeable. BT and SK look alike, but the first one is a standard for Asia, the second one is spread in Europe. These holders are universal and they are widely used. ISO, another visually indistinguishable tool holder. Here, the area of application is different. ISO is needed for massing milling instruments that work on low or medium RPM. All three tool holders have a steep taper, which means that they can lose accuracy when running at extremely high RPMs. BT and BBT. BT tool holders have a single contact point between the tool holder and the spindle. BBT tool holders feature a dual contact design with additional contact surfaces. This increases rigidity and stability, providing better tool performance. But they may not be compatible with all CNC machines, unlike BT, that they are widely used. HSK, rigid and lightweight holder. Its main purpose is high speed and high accuracy operation. 
HSK holders have a hollow shank design that provides a more direct and efficient transmission of power to the cutting tool, resulting in better accuracy, stability and cutting performance. They also have a dual contact. Also keep in mind that collets chuck deteriorate with time. They become less accurate as they age, which can cause a chatter and shorter the life of the cutting tool. Check their condition regularly. Do not wait until the last minute to change them, because this can damage the spindle, which is going to be expensive. Collet chuck. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Tool holders consist of two elements, the upper part, which is BT, HSK and others, and the lower part, the collet chuck, or simple ER. The chuck's naming has three pieces, like ER11A or ER20M. What does that mean? The number after ER defines the diameter that the chuck has, and it's taken into account when choosing milling instruments and their shank diameter. For example, ER8 can fit end mills with a diameter up to 5 mm. As you can see, the instrument has to be smaller. Now, we'll go over the several types of collet chucks and fitting shank diameters for them. Now to the letter in the end. It indicates which type and size the fixating nut has. There are A, B, T1 and T2 types. So take into account when choosing so you know how to tighten everything properly later. ER and power. One more thing I want to point out. Collet chucks are divided by power and applications. This classification can be useful for beginners. ER8, used for miniature work, mainly for high power engraving tools. ER11, often used with power up to 1.5 kW, applied for fine engraving or non-ferrous metals, plastics and thin materials. ER16, power up to 1.5 kW, primarily used for solid wood, plywood and plastics. ER20, up to 3.5 kW, a widely used spindle type as it is suitable for working with wood, acrylic, metal, stone, etc. Almost any task can be handled with this size. ER25, ER32, power over 4.5 kW, spindles for large diameter tools necessary for working with metal, stone and thick wood. And here is one more tip for you. Choose collet chucks and spindle power according to your specific tasks. If you have any difficulties with this, contact our managers or write in the comments. Also, Virmer has training for beginners. What else? This is relevant only for these people who need the bearings replaced or extra tools purchased. Bearing, there are steel and ceramic ones. Steel bearings can be found everywhere. They are not expensive and not sensitive to end mill breakage and other loads. However, their precision of work is not that high. Ceramic bearings are vice versa accurate, but complicated to be found and changed. Also, bearings have various walking principles. Modern CSC rotor machines usually have roller or ball ones. Roller bearings offer high rigidity, but are not practical for machines with low power or small loads. They are suitable for high power spindles. Pull stud. This is the link between the machine and the tool holder. Most machines require a standard pull stud design, ISO, BT, others, and some require a specific design. You will come into this when you need to purchase extra tools. You will have to select the same ones that you currently have for the holder. Checklist. When choosing a spindle, look at the following things. Cooling type, power, ER type, Tool change system, is it manual or automatic? Also, look at the pull stud and tool holder if required. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comment below if you do. My name is David, this is Virmer. Subscribe and like the video so you won't miss the next one. See you!